Hello again, everyone. Um, this is going to be my new lecture where I talk about the identity crisis, um, which is kind of what I go into. Talk a little bit about my process that I've been going through recently um, and go over how your identity is not who you are. And this is something I've had an experience with recently where I was kind of settling in for the night and I had just, I got some like peppermint and tea tree oil and just kind of like rubbed it in my hands and just smelled it. And usually I do that just to kind of like calm down sometimes whenever I feel kind of overwhelmed. Um, and this time I kind of, it kind of put me in a really relaxed state, a state that I haven't been in in a long time. And, you know, usually when it's, you know, when it's really dark, I kind of see the, the residual light colors just kind of like bouncing around. Um, just kind of normal stuff you would see if you like closed your eyelids. Um, but something that happened is that I got to this state of mind where I was, I was kind of in this observation mode. It was kind of like what people talk about when they get to, when they're in deep meditation. And it was really amazing. And it, in, at first, the notion was your identity doesn't exist, or at least in the way that you think it does. So most people attach themselves to the identity. Um, and that is why many people cannot be fulfilled through things they identify with, um, is because they are but constructs, um, like we've talked about before, the matrix body. Um, but I was kind of going into it and, and thinking about it and realizing that identity, which is this, the, social con, the social construct of you, what you are to others, um, even what you think about yourself, is transient, is fleeting, is always changing. Maybe not constantly every second, but you're constantly having new experiences every day, no matter how no matter how routine, is still different from the last. Your identity changes and morphs into different things over time. And it showed me that it was temporary, it was transient, that the foundation lies within the human being, that the foundation lies within the awareness. And the body stores that experiential knowledge it stores that identity, it stores your interaction with others as memory in your psyche or as trauma in your psyche, which is a kind of memory. And that kind of has to do with fear and, and other things like that. But this is kind of where the, the thought pattern went. And it, you know, it went to if you, if you attach yourself to identity, which is what I had done my whole life, and what I've been getting over through this podcast as well is genuinely expressing myself to my friends, my family, to people in general. And throughout my whole life, I was a people pleaser. I kind of was going through the first stages of interaction and kind of learned what people liked and what people didn't. And I did what people liked more than I did what they didn't because of the reaction, because of the fear of rejection or the fear of not being accepted by other people. And what this did is it bred a kind of disingenuine expression, um, memory or a kind of program inside my mind. And I didn't have anyone there. I mean, maybe, you know, maybe I did, you know, when I was younger, a lot younger, um, but I didn't have anyone there to specifically guide me. I mean, I'm not blaming this on my parents, but I didn't have anyone there to be like, okay, 
So now that you're interacting with people, you can understand that if, you're, if your ideas or your thoughts or what you do or what you say isn't accepted by others, it's not the end of you. But that's what your body has a response with. That's how your body responds. Because our hormones, our body is still in the wild. It's still in the grasslands, uh, you know, throwing spears around. Your primal body, your hormones, all the things that make your body tick are, is still in the wild. And so you have to treat it as such because our intellectual mind has far surpa surpassed it in terms of expansiveness. Um, and that's a, that's a whole different story. But, you know, it got to the point where I just repressed a lot of the things that I want you know, wanted to express. And it got to a point where the program was so deeply seated in my body, in my mind, that my response to everything was expressing as others would see fit and not how I actually felt about the situation or how I actually felt about myself or how I actually felt about someone else. And it got to the point where I would just break and I would have humongous episodes of anger. And I still have remnants of that to this day. And it's scary. Um, it you know scared me and other people. And it was because I wasn't expressing myself. I wasn't, <clears throat> wasn't grounded. And what I was doing, and I wasn't aware of the fact that you, other people don't have to accept what you do or say, and that interactions are complex and develop over time, but at then I didn't know that. So it got to the point where I started to realize that this is my next process, that this is my next challenge uh, for, for life. Uh, this is my next stepping stone, is getting over my attachments to what other people think about me, and in turn being able to express myself genuinely. And this has to go in with me being attached to an identity of myself that is more accommodating to what other people like or what other people are comfortable with rather than what my identity actually is what my expression actually is, what my thoughts actually are. Instead of being at the, basically the whim of all sorts of different types of people and places and things and situations, because the, this, this exposes the underlying mechanics of personaism, of persona programs where you put on a different mask for each situation in each person so that your real expression, your real self never really gets to speak. Only when you're not around other people or you're around that best friend that you'll say anything to. And a lot of this conversation, a lot of this talk came from a talk I had with my girlfriend today. Um, and we went over it, and initially I thought, you know, identity doesn't exist at all. It does to a certain extent, mostly psychologically, but it does as a construct, as a, as a means of interacting, as a means of efficiency, it does exist. The problem is when you put too much emphasis and too much, when you attach yourself too much to it, then it becomes poisonous, it becomes toxic. You never reach or find fulfillment within it. So, first point I want to go over is identity is real to the extent that you and others hold on to it. So it is a changing uh, institution. Identity changes over time so that it cannot hold weight. It changes because of your experience. Um, because of your, um, 
interaction and expression and then the interaction of expression of others and you. And then it goes into the dynamics of interaction and the dynamics of relationships. It becomes complex and it becomes a delicate issue that from the time we're young, it is not given emphasis to. There should be a class called how to interact and also how to get to know yourself, who you are, your expression, your real self, how to get to that place before you go out into the world, before you have more dynamic interactions, because the interactions you have with yourself are key. They're the foundation of the interactions you have everywhere else in life. And this has really hit hard with me because I've never had a relationship with myself, with my body, with my mind, how I think, how I do things. And it has led me to think that I can live vicariously through everyone else's interactions, everyone else's lives, everyone else's accomplishments, instead of sticking up for my real self, sticking up for my real expression and getting and developing that thing. And people will say, isn't that selfish? Yes, it fucking is. Yes, it is. It's very selfish. Um, that's the whole point of this, is to become selfish so you can become selfless. In the sense of you can become, when, when you become selfish, you can gain that self-power so that whenever you go out, it's effortless. The interactions you have with others, the relationships that develop are effortless because the relationship you have with yourself is the primary focus and then everything else stems from there and everything else becomes uh, effortless it becomes easier to do at least more efficient the machinery works better when you get out into the construct when you get out into the matrix it just works better when you have yourself down because then you know how to respond, you know what to respond with, you know what you really feel, and that's appropriate to say. So it doesn't come out all discombobulated, you know, whenever your body lets go of it. Um, so, next point, the longer your expression is founded in identity, the less genuine you become. So since identity is just a construct, it's through interaction, expression, experience, all those things intermingling together. And also, you know, identification. So it's kind of like a breaking the ice scenario, identification. Okay, you are this name, you are, you have this profession, you do these things. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about real stuff let's talk about the business you know let's talk about the how's everything going let's talk about what you like about that what you do about that and then slowly you can make your way back to the self your real expression your real genuine experience but if your expression is founded in identity so your identity is the one speaking you will never, you, it will always be obfuscating. It will always be confusing you forever and ever. And you will always be chasing it. And it is this, it is the rat race. It is always chasing that thing that you want, which is acceptance ultimately. But it becomes a rat race of your own mind, of creating more and more personas for yourself to fit others what you think they want and what they think you you want and what they want you to do instead of what you actually feel what you actually want what you actually want to say and this is what happens and when that happens uh you get the whole materialistic thing where you slowly die inside because that is the problem with a big part of the problem this is one little one little puzzle piece of the whole issue is that we have an identity crisis and you can see this in Hollywood you can see this in every tier of existence that whenever you attach yourself to your identity you never will ever know your self 
because it will never ever see the light of day the identity is where the testing grounds are. So the matrix, the construct, the, the, the status, the role, all of these things that are come like a kutra ma to your real self, they're the testing grounds. So if you have a genuine expression that you don't, you don't tell people, if you were to express it, someone were to challenge it, make you question that, then there's growth. Then you can say, oh, well, I thought that, but no. I have this other perspective. I have this other identity that is interacting with my expression. So now there, there comes the possibility for growth. So what happens is, is that you never grow. You're always chasing what other people want and you never grow. So then what happens is, is while you're slowly dying inside, you are a slave to what other people think and what other people do. Now, if you just were to genuinely express yourself, you would get a piece of what it feels like to be real. To, to, you would get a piece of what it feels like to get what you were chasing in the rat race. So you, you, get, a, you get a glimpse of what it's like to see the real raw self which is endless and infinite with potential which is amazing um especially with the amount of people that are on the planet because that just breeds more just growth and and amazing potentiality it's uh, next one expressing yourself only to the acceptance of others and this goes into friction between friends you've known for a long time because people have just a snapshot of what you are. If you express yourself to them, your ideas, your your the way you speak, the way you the way you do things changes over time. And if you've known someone a long time, and maybe you don't get to see them that much anymore, they'll see you as different. So you'll be different, and so will they. Unless they're chasing that shit, then they won't be very much. They'll be like, oh, I'm these things, and yeah, that's what I'm dealing with. Um, but friction between friends you've known for a long time goes into you being scared to express yourself. This is what I've felt, as I'm speaking from experience. Friction in the sense of you are afraid to express that to them because you're afraid they won't accept you for it because they'll be like oh that's different than what you were then what the fuck oh that's weird oh you're different now like you know how everyone says fame makes everyone different it's like everyone makes everyone different get your head out of your fucking ass okay that's one thing that i've dealt with specifically is doing that is having friction develop in that sense where your body's like oh no oh no you might get rejected oh no your friend you know might say this and it's like well your friend ain't worth shit if he if they don't understand that you change over time that your identity what you do what you say is not gonna be concrete and complete and just no change forever no change in ideas or, or what they're exposed to. They're not worth your time and effort. They're not. Leave them in the dust. If they want to hold you to a standard, if they want to say, this is you, I'm going to put you in my little category here in my little, my little psyche. You're in a category now, you do this, you say this, we talk about this. Uh, they're they're a, a fucking waste of your time. Um, you don't express yourself genuinely because you value identity over true self-expression. Just want to let you know all these points, I could just say I instead of you, and it would still apply. <laughs> These are things that I've done or do that I'm working on getting out of. Um, now, expression is 
delicate in the sense of there is a method that develops over time, a mastery of expression that develops when to say things, how to say them, all these different things. Yes, being raw and real is wonderful, but certain situations require tact um, and, and many different things like that. Developing your ideas into things other people from other backgrounds, from other perspectives can understand is amazing. If you say just what your thought is without developing it, raw, real, yes, it is raw and real, but will the majority of people understand it? Maybe not. Maybe you have to provide background, you know, get into how to tell stories, how to develop an idea in expression, which is really big. Sometimes when I'm in one of these videos, I will develop my idea just happenstance by talking about it. Um, and this is really important is it, it, it exposes the underlying mechanics of the dy dynamicism, the dynamics of expression, which is nearly endless, but it requires a mastery, and this is why a lot of people aren't going to want to do it, because they're fucking lazy. Um, or they just haven't uh, been given the right um, the right push for it, so they haven't been given the right um, uh, push, kind of like. When you're on a cliff, you know, cliff jumping, and you're all scared, and you're like, oh, God, um, and you're trying your best to, like, get around and, like, you know, walk down the cliff, but you got to jump. And uh, it's like someone coming and kind of pushing you a little bit. Well, push. It's like, oh, there's a fucking cliff there, dude. Like, you're going to have to face it. There's no way around this. Um, one day. Um, and next one is, I, identity is transient, temporary, and changing constantly because of exposure. That's kind of something we already went over, but it is good to readdress because... It is always changing. It's 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 like water. It's never it's never truly stagnant unless it's constricted. Your identity can stay stagnant and stay the same if you want it to be, but the world, uh, in terms of the external world, will be changing around you regardless. No matter how much you resist it. Your body will change, the people around you will change, the environment will change, everything will change, because that is what happens. Things change, things grow, things decay, you know, cycles, blah, blah, blah. Next thing, the self, experience, expression, and societal interaction create the identificational conceptual construct that is you. So that goes into, briefly, the whole system that is exposed, the, uh, the uh, construct, the network that happens whenever you go into that, the intricacies of expression and identity but if you don't have the self at a deep level addressed, your identity will mean shit to those who have addressed the self. So, a lot of people in this world, identity crisis is the reason why I said that, identity crisis, is because a lot of people in the world attach more value to one's identity one's profession, status, role, ideas, ideologies, religions, all these things, before addressing character, before addressing the real self, before addressing the individual, the human, there is, because of what we see, because of how things appear, because of how things are portrayed, we see the superficiality. We see the superficial first, and then we have to dig our way through the detritus into the real person, the real individual, the heart, what they actually think. And this is the crisis now. 
And it's the reason why we, we live in a world such as we do with borders, with all these insane overemphasized things because of what is happening, because of the crisis I'm talking about, because people attach more value to the status, they att attach more value to the identity than they do their own expression, their own um, interaction, all of those things, because they aren't selfish. Because everyone gets this groupthink mentality, this groupthink idea that if you help others, you'll be better. And it's not true. One second. Um, yes, if, if you help better, if you help others, that's wonderful. Um, but it will not solve you avoiding addressing yourself, avoiding addressing the void within you, within everyone. So it will never take precedence over that. So if you go Mother Teresa, it won't matter. You know, Mother Teresa had her shit down, let's be honest. She had addressed herself already. She was ready to give everything she could to everyone else because she was strong at a base level. But if you're not, you're fucking weak sauce. You're just going to be going through the motions. And... You probably won't get very far. People will be like, oh, wow, you know, you're doing such good work. And that's where you will get your fulfillment is through other people. And not through self-fulfillment, through the self. Through interaction, through expression, through all those things we've been talking about. You will become always obfuscated, always chasing that thing which you already have deep inside of you. So, well, it's not really, it's not really anywhere in particular. It is you. I guess you could say inside, but not really. So, understanding that identity is just a consensually constructed conceptualization of how you appear. That goes into kind of what I talked about, is it's the appearance of you. It is not you. It is the appearance of you. Your name is given to you at birth, and therefore you think it defines you. And then people say, Sam, don't do that. Now, Sam, that's not that's not good. And then you say, Oh, so Sam has to do Sam does certain things. You know, in order to not be rejected by everyone, Sam does things in certain ways. Now, Sam has to do things in certain ways. Sam, you know, and then it goes into how your body programs you from then on out because it's even more delicate when you're young, when you're more moldable to programming, to behaviors, to responses, to all the things we've been talking about. So what can happen is, is you can be programmed very easily to not value the expression of the self because there are many institutions I talked about in my Taming the Beast Within lecture like schooling other things like that that teach us to desensitize our expression and uh devalue it and then value other people's expression first value authority expression first and not our expression primarily thus building this and other things but an identification Identity crisis. Um, a life trapped within identity. So, if you, if you always, if you always are accommodating for other people's stuff, if you're always accommodating for identity, you will be trapped in an endless maze that you can never get out of. An endless maze that goes on and on and on and on. And there are many levels to this maze, status, role, iconism, uh, fame, tons and tons of things. We're just making more and more every day for people to get lost inside of forever because they don't have an origination point. They don't know where the start of the maze was. 
So they run around thinking the maze is the shit. The maze is freedom. The maze is all these things I think it is, when really, you're trapped. And you don't even know it. You don't even know that there's this other part that has nothing, that has almost nothing to do with that. That is the self. That is the realness, the rawness. So, what happens is, is you conform your expression to accommodate successful identification instead of what is truly felt inside. So this is where the soul rot comes into play. This is where your soul rots. Because if you constantly live in a successful identification system where you've done things and they've been successful in the past, so you do them and you just do them to accommodate for everyone else, what you'll get to is a point where you have no fucking clue who you are. You have no idea what you are. And all you've been doing is living inside a maze of other of what society wants from you, what others want from you, what, what is expected of you as a person, what your name is given, what you are on paper, but not who you are as a person. And this creates that. It creates soul rot, where you are constantly chasing fulfillment and not knowing that it is a glass with a hole in the bottom and you're just trying to fill it <sighs> sometimes there are ways to fill it a little faster but it's still going right through it's still draining out the bottom you know fame all these things you're just oh look it's almost full oh my goodness and it's such a good feeling and then after you turn it off you go back to it it just goes right down into the sink. And you're like, what? You look down into the sink, and there's a dark void. But too scared to go there. You know, rather just keep trying to fill the cup up as much as possible. Oh! You are trying to fill the cup, which will always be empty. At the end of your, your, uh, your attempts to make it full, because you cannot make yourself fulfilled. You cannot fulfill yourself. You are already that. You, you are that already. Just as you are. You are already that. Which is interesting. Um, so... A snowball effect happens whenever you get to that soul rot place. A snowball effect happens where a snowball effect of repression. So whenever you do that and you have real genuine thoughts, you just go <laughs> do these neurotic holding patterns where you just kind of like, okay, I'm thinking this and it's really not appropriate for the situation. So I'm just going to. You just repress it, push it back down, and then go, how could I make this just just quite wonderful for everyone to hear? You know, how could I how could I make it to where people laugh or where something happens that I that I like, that other people would like? And you just push that down. Is what I've done in the past for the first whole entire part of my life. This is what I did. And this is why I think it's really important for everyone, because I know a lot of people do it. Um, so, at a certain point, I realized that identity is merely a symptom of expression and experience with others. And at a deep level, it only exists to the extent that you, you and others hold on to it. Primarily, you. So it only exists to the, to the point that you let it exist. 
because it is a, a construct, you can jump inside of a construct and go, oh, cool. I, I can do a lot of things in here. And then you jump back out to your primal position, to the primary state. You go, oh, that was cool. Interesting what I can do in there. Then you go to the next one. You jump in, you jump back out. But you don't jump in and then jump to the next one and then jump to the next one and then and never return to that start of the maze. Because when you step out of the maze, you're like, oh, you know, there's no, oh, there's no walls. You know, there's no, uh, there's no endless corners and turning and constantly walking. I can relax. I can just sit down and look at the tree line. You can't, you can't do that if you're constantly chasing this thing, which again is a symptom of expression, experience, exposure, and interaction. And it's data bank. It's like, it's, uh, it's cataloged in your body and in other people's body, energetically. So that's why you have these responses, is because your body's very intelligent, but also it's rooted in the wild, it's rooted in the stone age, whatever you want to call it. And that's why there are these intricacies, and that's why this happens. That's why our body is like this. It is a challenge. It is something to make us stronger in the end. Stronger individuals. And I have some more points that I didn't really have room for up here. I kind of got to this point where I realized my name was given to me at birth to symbolize my identity, to be an identification tool. So it is not me, but it is a way that people call me, a way that people identify me as. It is not me. But it is a way to pick me out of a crowd. Sam looks like this. Sam wears generally these clothes. He's this height. He has these colored eyes. He has white skin. He has you know, white skin. He has you know, brown hair. Ways of identification, ways of appearance. And then the appearance of your identity as well goes into that. So it symbolizes your identity. It is a symbol, a construct. And it is a construct for you to make yourself known within it. So it is meant for you to play inside of, get known, get noticed, connect with people, connect and create new networks all over the place, and then return to the primal position, and then branch off again like a tree. But the tree, in order to have branches that connect and extend on, it has to have a trunk, a stable trunk, a strong trunk that has deep roots. So you are the fucking trunk. And you need to have roots in your body, in your mind. They need to be strong. You, they need to be nourished. Or else someone's going to come and cut your ass down. So it is merely an identification tool for others to know you. For others to know you in the sense of what they can see. And, you know, however, if that thing doesn't align with your true intention for this life, you will rot away in the cell of your own mind's prison, forever wishing a life beyond the name, a life beyond the maze. You'll say, I'm tired of chasing this, this thing, this thing kind of inanimate thing that I'm always trying to chase. It's like this, this thing that I can't really see out there, but I can. I'm tired of, of going through the maze and not having a place to come back to. Not knowing my way through it, around it, to the end, and then getting back to the starting point. How do, how do I go into it, have some fun? Come back out of it. Or go into it and get to the end. But there's no map. There's there's no one. There are people who have had success in this area. And they hold the key. They hold maps. They're like, this is a pretty efficient way to do it. Uh, some of them are right. Some of them are wrong. 
However, regard I don't have a lot of I don't have a lot of knowledge about the maze itself. I mean, I do in certain areas, but let's say for a doctor, it's like there's a pretty good map there to be a doctor. I'm not going to argue with that. But there's also a very good map for getting back to the self and realizing that's a profession. It's again, it's superficial. It's accoutrement. It's on top. It's external. So, overcoming fear of acceptance of your genuine self, what I call the prime entity. So there's the identity, which a good a friend of mine on Facebook called uh, call the id entity, the ego entity, the super ego, the superimposed higher dimensional ego. I call the primal self the prime entity, the first entity prime that's what prime prima prime means p-r-i-m e-n-t-i-n-t e-n-t-i-t-y the prime entity so over, overcoming the fear of acceptance of others so not being accepted that's a big thing that i face all the time and then I know a lot of other people face out there. Um, I, I know it. I've experienced it a lot, and I think that overcoming that, um, you know, getting around it, in fact, it's not even overcoming, it's going through it. So really confronting it, absorbing it, accepting it, understanding it, doing all those things, processing it. You have to start processing your problems. Um, and then, you know, get that interaction with the prime entity, the, the first entity, the primary source of you, whatever it is. I'm not sure what it is. Um, and then understanding the way others seeing you as only being superficial. So, again... What other people think you are, what other people think of what you say is superficial. Yes, there can be value in it. Yes, it is valuable. But to the extent that you attach yourself to it, defies the interaction. So be careful with how you attach yourself to things. Be careful with how you interact with people. Because it can program you. It can program your mind to think. It can program your body to think. Those who do not accept or work with your genuine self are not worth your time. It's kind of what I said before. They're a waste of your time. Just whoop, leave them in the dust. Be like, all right, man. You know, I'm a human being. Change. You know, how, how can you expect me not to? When new information comes to light, I mean, I can't deny it. When new experience, when new exposure comes to light, I can't deny these things. I can't just put it on the back burner. Ugh. So yeah, get those fucking people out of your life. Start expressing genuinely and start seeing who stays and who leaves. Kind of relates to what I was talking about. Start doing this. Experiment. See who's willing to work with it. See who's willing to work with me and like, oh, that's weird. Uh, what about this? And then you have real interactions. Work with it. See how it goes. You know, start saying some things that are unconventional. Start, you know, saying some things that you usually don't say that you really feel. And then start seeing who reacts, how they react, and start kind of getting back into, once you access the self, getting back into the identity, seeing how it works, retreat back from it. Not retreat, but pull back from it. See how that interacts. Just develop that relationship with yourself, and then it, it'll relate to everyone else. And just make sure that that prime entity, that self, is good. Make sure it's doing okay. You know, listen. Listen to it. That's a big one. When you become genuine, there will be no room for fake-ass people. If you're really genuine, you will attract genuine people. If you are genuine and it throws some people off, that's okay. It, you know, 
people used to a certain way that you do things and then you do them differently. That's going to create friction. It's going to create conflict. That's okay. See who stays. See who stops calling you. See who leaves. See who doesn't accept what you've become. See who really likes you. See who really loves you. See who really cares about you. Because if they really care about you, they would want you to care for yourself first. Care for you first. Not for them. If someone has them, themselves, in, in terms of how you should act, as the primary focus of you, you should be focused on me. You, sh you should be focused on, on me right now. That is toxic. That kind of person is toxic. The kind of person that needs your interaction or that can't function without it is that same thing as someone who is not addressing themselves. So, what that kind of leaves off with is kind of the intricacies of higher dimensional interaction. Uh, so it goes, you know, interaction with yourself first and foremost, the prime entity, the primal self, the primal position, getting that back, getting back real expression, genuine expression, and then working your way from there moving out into the greater picture, into the greater dimensionality, into the greater interaction, um, into the greater expression, into the greater uh, exposure and experience. Um, and that relays more and more and more levels that I can't get into right now. Um, it, you know, in future videos, I will love to, but um, that's gonna be it for today. Um, Hope you like my video. Um, this one was mostly about the, the identity crisis. Um, I will be uh, back next time sometime soon for a, uh, for a new video for you guys and a podcast soon to come. Thank you.